uh, let's start in how I like the best, which is the story of failure, right? So these are the versions and the releases of Jason Autodeck. Jason Autodeck is one of the hustlers who I I'm really proud of because somebody uh, has used it in production. And so you know, it, it's definitely not a work project. But, but somebody uses it to work, so I'm really proud of it. It generates uh, J the a Haskell type declaration from JSON documents. Uh, now, it's, it was really the hobby project, uh, and uh, the hobby project uh, that I released some time ago, and I talked to people about it, and I started adding features, and you see, nearly every release you say have this semantic version like major release that's a major thing then minor release and then finally, finally patch level Therefore. Uh, it doesn't matter <laughs> it's just about versioning and our release process that I'm talking today right so if you look at this patch level most of this is like I release the, the version 2.1, uh, two, 0.2.1, uh, about um, say, oh, I clicked the wrong thing. Okay, now let's focus. Okay. I released version 0.2.1.0, and then shortly after there was something that I needed to correct it because people could not install it, and then Another thing that got to be corrected because it worked only for some compiler versions and so on, right? Mm. So one one common way to deal with that is you have ninety builds in Firefox, and you have this system that you basically release this thing, and for the week you ask people whether it is like worthy a real release because it was only a power beta, and then you really release it. So uh, the process, so the, the, there are the times that I've been working in the bank, I was visibly more diligent. And, and then it started again because I just updated, I added a cool nice feature or somebody asked me to fix the bug and then, then I forgot to do all the steps to check the package during the release process, right? And I had like, 12 patches, 13 patches in, I think, two months. So, yeah, you could say that that's what CI should do for you, like testing on different compiler versions and different platforms. Yeah, right? So I did just that, and with Travis CI, I had the same problem because obviously you need not only to use CI to, to test it, so I did, I, I did test that it works and everything is alright. But also make sure that the release process, you know, like you upload everything that you should. So the next step would be, okay, why, why doesn't CI automatically upload the new package version when it passes all the tests and it has new version RAM number, right? So that's what I did for version 2.0 and 3.0, right? Except that it's not really fully automatic when I update the, the version number. I still need to click that I'm really sure that I want to release it. And obviously since version 2.0 there were no more patch level issues. Except for this one. We was actually testing the, the, the change in the, in the release process. So now the release process is fully automatic. And... Uh, I can I can show you maybe how how it works. So first, it builds with uh, eight different compiler versions and three different uh, Haskell build systems because obviously Haskell has three different build systems now, like Haskell, Stack, and Pierre. So I test with all of them. Obviously, they are not entirely mutual compatible. So then after that, it actually uses the distribution that is to about to be uploaded with documentation and tests it that it works on user on on a fresh docker image and then i can i can enter this i cannot i do not lo longer uh, release automatically right 
Okay, question time. So I just yeah. press the button on, on GitLab CI and then it, it does it for me. So I cannot screw something by doing the release process. There are other people that have this script called the Neil that does all the step as a program to, to avoid this, this issue. There is this GitLab CI configuration that you can steal and I recommend everybody to steal if they feel like that does it for two packages. So if you release a lot of packages or if you just feel like automating everything including release process then please use it. Do you use your own runner? Uh, yeah, I, I use my own runner. Right. So GitLab is, is open source so you can use the CI runner on your own machine or somewhere on AWS if you have a lot of package versions. That's what I recommend. And since I test with like eight different compiler versions and three build systems, I, 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 I also recommend it. Right. Because that, that's a lot of minutes on CI. I think they have a limit of 2,000 minutes and three. So the manifest version will also display here, uh, here besides the warning, it will also display what was actually the issue here. And we are adding all the code climate and the code quality tools that I know in ASCO to this uh, to this script because it's obviously very very useful when somebody sends a patch to you to automatically annotate this patch. Oh, by the way, you have your unused function and by the way, you didn't even connect, comment on your path, so I don't really know what you are doing, right? And then people feel also better, like they, they respond quicker to the issue because they feel like machine pointed it, so it's not personal, right? Uh, GitLab CI is there a limit the number of times you can run over? Uh, you can always have GitLab CI installed on your own machine, no problem. No, no limits. Yeah. And and you have GitLab Runner, you can install on your own machine, right? That just does CI for you. No, free. I think for account is 2,000 units per month. Yeah. 2,000 units per month, even in, in the local. Yeah, it, it goes really fast. I mean, if you if you, if you you are active developer, then you usually make, uh, I don't know, 10 or 20 commits per, per day, and then all the git build, and some of the builds can take like Eight compiler versions, three build systems is like an hour of minutes. So that, that will go really fast. 2000 minutes is for small projects. Questions? Could you look up the, the, the YAML file, please? Yeah, yeah, sure. So the YAML file here, it is basically the stages. Then the variables I really should use, but I don't. And then the important part of statement that you are caching the sandboxes or npm package files or something like this. Then there is a generic uh, build script. This is this one. Cool. This is Cabal. Basically. Yeah, what, uh, Cabal is like npm package manager. Right. Yeah. Oh, so it checks the compiler version, the, the Cabal version for debugging and then it uses the default image. I always use like pre-built image on Docker. That's also automatically built so that I cannot screw it by, by releasing the wrong version. <laughs> and then it builds documentation at the end. And there is this uh, customization of the build system with different GHC version variable for each of the versions, right? So we use YAML, uh, variables or yum include to to do this so dot build exe is actually yum template right that we expand with changing the values of some fields right in this case variables so if each of these builds uses the same dot build exe right and then you can also indicate that you upload the, the packages as as artifacts so anybody can download this version that was built 
uh, in this case they expire in two weeks so if you want to make it release after build you need to do it within two weeks because they are these artifacts are also used for the release actually um, you have made any more, more questions last one any more no okay this is all open source. I I recommend looking at. If, if even if you don't use Hashel, you probably want to have a GitLab CI script of this kind because it's really short and like at least release process you can automate to npm for example. So it's like faster with Hashel. 